Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and what is a good way of getting information? More particularly, if I want to know information about a certain object, let's say the spoon here, what is a good way of getting information about it? Now of course, there are easy ways to do this. I could always feel the spoon and feel its shape. I could also look at the spoon. I could also take multiple pictures of the spoon and analyze it that way, or I could do different scans of the spoon like an x-ray scan. Now which of those methods would you say is the most valid method of obtaining information about the spoon? Now flat earthers often argue that if you can touch something or if you can see something with your own eyes, then that is the most valid way of ascertaining information about a certain thing. But Human sensory information isn't 100% reliable. There's always flaws in each sense. For example, if I rub my hands across the spoon, I don't necessarily feel all the scratches that are there that I can see just by looking at it. And when I look at the spoon, I'm seeing something that isn't really there that's upside down that looks handsome as fuck. Now, I personally think that both of those methods are valid ways of obtaining information. You can look at something, you obtain information about it. You feel something, you've just obtained information about it. I just don't think that those are the only ways of obtaining information. And flat earthers have this really weird tendency as well to dismiss information by sight unless you've also touched what you're seeing. Which is really weird because I don't know anybody that gets all their information from touching. I should probably put the spoon down as it's probably starting to feel pretty violated about now. Now I have first hand experience of trying to obtain information just from touching because I couldn't see what I was touching. Now when I can see what I'm touching I often get a very very different idea of the layout of what it is I'm touching than when I can't see it. Now to make this sound a little bit less like an innuendo, it could be that you're going through a desk and the light's out and you can't see what's in the desk or maybe you've got to focus on a camera or something and so you've got to sort of just feel around in the desk. Now what you'll find is you'll find that your brain tries to build a layout of what's there and you know you'll go and look there eventually and be like holy shit this looks so different to what it felt like. And there's the pen drive that I was looking for. And there's also so many examples of tasks that aren't really that difficult if you can see what you're doing. For example, taking off a bra or plugging a USB drive into a USB port. Now believe it or not, both of those things can take five seconds. And believe it or not, I have managed to do both of those things in five seconds with sight, but without sight they tend to take five minutes. Oh and when I'm talking about both of those things I don't mean both of those things at the exact same time. I mean like five seconds to take off a bra or five seconds to put a USB into a USB port. I don't know why I'd be doing both of them two things at the exact same time. Now to verify something like a spoon, I don't need to do a scan of the spoon to know that it's a spoon. I can visually see that it's spoon and that is adequate enough for me to determine that this is a spoon. Now what I cannot determine from sight alone is what exactly is this made of? I mean it looks to be some kind of metal but I can't just simply tell by looking at it. And it does say stainless on the back but could that be stainless steel? Is there a such thing as stainless titanium? And when it says stainless on the back that's not a 100% guarantee that it's telling me what it's made of. It could just be that they put stainless on the back to make people think that it's made of stainless steel when in fact it's just made of aluminum. That being said, I can say with a lot of certainty that it is made of stainless steel. And the reason is because this appears to be made of metal. Now I could be wrong on that, but I don't think I am. And a lot of metal things, like spoons and forks and knives, are made with stainless steel. Now it stands to reason that if a lot of metal spoons, forks and knives are made of stainless steel, then this is probably made of the exact same stuff. Especially if it exhibits characteristics 
that are expected of products made with stainless steel. Now another thing is that people watching this video right now are gathering quite a bit of information about the spoon. They're seeing what it looks like and they're also hearing me tell them details about it. And some people watching this video might say, but that spoon could always be CGI. I don't know that it exists because I haven't touched it. And the only real response to someone saying, well, that spoon can be CGI, is using logic and reason. So the spoon very well could be CGI. I could be CGI, but is it very likely that this spoon is CGI? So for starters, how difficult would it be to CGI in a spoon like this, especially in accordance with all my hand motions? Then you've got to consider lighting, shadows, reflections, and you know, it could take someone a while, but it is possible. But how many subscribers do I get? Is it really worth someone putting in all that effort just to make a video with a fake spoon? And the answer is, not really. Unless you want to show how easy it is to put a fake spoon into a video, which I sure as hell ain't going to be bothered to do. So you're stuck with this very real spoon. But moving away from spoons and space heads for a bit, I actually want to talk about other kinds of information because sight and touch aren't the only types of information that there are. So let's start with a very basic type of information that most people can go out and test for themselves. Current. So if you want to know the amount of electrical current flowing through a circuit, how do you measure that? Do you measure it by seeing it? Do you measure it by touching it? I sure hope not. The way that I would measure current is by using a device specifically designed to measure current. Now, does that make the readings that I get off the device invalid? Because I never actually went ahead and touched the circuit to make sure that there was current flowing through it, or I never went ahead and actually was able to see the current flowing through the circuit? I would argue that no, the readings aren't invalid. Now, the readings could be invalid if it's not calibrated correctly, and that's a whole nother issue. But if I can test that it's calibrated correctly, then I don't see any reason why the readings that I get would be invalid. And why would those readings be any less valid than something that you can see or touch? Another example that I'd give is, what if you have broken your leg? How would you check to see if your leg is actually broken? There is always the very painful possibility of cutting that leg open, having a look at the bone and going, oh yes, that, this leg has been broken, most certainly. And cutting a leg open will probably cause more damage to the person with a broken leg than letting it heal without the knowledge of it being broken wood. So a really good way to check whether a leg is broken or not is to use x-rays. So are x-rays invalid because you're not actually touching the bone that the x-ray shows? Are x-rays invalid because you're not physically looking at the bone that the x-ray shows? Could it be that bones don't actually exist and they're a hoax by Big Pharma to trick us into having broken legs when we don't actually have any bones to break? So I probably shouldn't have actually mentioned that last one because flat earthers might actually start believing that. But what you said is the truth. Bones don't actually exist. They're all a hoax by Big Pharma to trick people into thinking they can have broken legs. Maybe I should just ignore you, Karen, for my own sanity. But my point is, are x-rays a valid way of obtaining information about something like a bone? If you agree that they are, we can take this a step further. If you don't, please explain why. So here's how all of this relates to Flat Earth. A lot of Flat Earthers will say, you can't prove that Earth has a core. And even some people that aren't Flat Earthers will think, you know, you can't show that Earth has a core because you can't dig down that far. So how might one go about showing that Earth has a core? And keep in mind that I'll say showing because I don't think that anything can be 100% proven. Yes, not even your bones can be proven. You boneless chicken breasts. Imagine taking that out of context, eh? So we can't really use x-rays to show that Earth has a core because x-rays wouldn't travel far enough but we could use seismic waves. So let's say a larger earthquake happens. What you can do is you can go ahead and measure 
from different points around the globe all the different types of waves you get from that earthquake. And based on all these waves from different locations, we would be able to work out, okay, where the earthquake happened, what the waves had to travel through to get to the particular location you are observing from, and how deep the earthquake is and all kinds of stuff like that. And there's a lot of different waves you can measure. You've got P waves, you've got PP waves, you've got L waves, you've got S waves, and you can use all those different waves to work out all this different information. So the waves that I've named aren't the only types of waves, there's a whole lot more. Just to name a few more, there's SKS, there's SS, there's PKP, there's PPP. It just keeps on going. And if you map out all these waves, you get a pretty good idea of what the Earth is made of. Much like if you take an X-ray of a leg. In fact, an X-ray of the leg probably provides way less detail about what's in the leg than seismic waves do of what's in the Earth. Now I can get a pretty good idea of what Flat Earthers will say to this. They'll say, oh, seismic waves are invalid because all the seismologists in the world are all in on the conspiracy. To which I have two things to say. First off, you could always get a degree in seismology and because you learn about seismology, you'd be able to be in a position to actually debunk seismology. And secondly, is this spoon fake? But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like that video. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about it. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Fight the Flat Earth, Stan Trucker, what Jesus, Robert Legere 3, and Wolfie. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. It's always very much appreciated. Link will be in the description. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. Spoon! Spacehead!